My good friend Suman called me one day to tell me about a trail ride that was scheduled for a Saturday and asked me to join. He told me we have to ride about 160 kilometers from Bangalore to the start point of the trail and the trail itself was about 40 kilometers long. This got me quite excited and this excitement level reaches the peak the night before the ride as it does before any journey begins irrespective of the mode of transport. Maybe because there is that bit of out of the routine feeling and doing something different going down a new path embracing a bit of uncertainty while looking forward to a new adventure and creating new memories having said that the night before the ride is also the time when one has more work to ensure that we have packed all the essentials our riding gears are kept ready our electronic gadgets are charged up and the final checks on our machines are done such as full tank of fuel correct tire pressure and lubing the chain unless of course you ride a 1250 gsa in which case you don't have a chain drive to move I woke up around 3:30 a.m. geared up and met Suman on Kanakpura road. Together we rode to the nice road entry point at Kanakpura road. We reached there by 4:45 a.m. and had to wait till the clock struck 5 a.m. Two wheelers are not allowed on nice road between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Apparently the system won't allow issuing the toll ticket even a minute beyond or before these stipulated times. The reason the nice road is closed between these times is that there have been robbery and other heinous crimes at night especially with travelers on two wheelers eventually when the nice road opened we quickly covered some ground and reached the meeting point at nelmangla we were greeted by dj mahanip who was already at the scene on his hero expels dj owned an africa twin which he sold recently next to arrive was hemant on his ducati scrambler desert sled followed by Nagendra on his Honda Africa Twin. Later Bharat and Alok arrived on their Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro a piece and there was our group for the day. DJ took a head start as we all cranked up our motorcycles and immediately there was a problem. Hayman's desert sled's check engine light wouldn't go away. Suman tried to analyze the problem but couldn't get the light to go away. So Hayman decided that he would ride some distance with the light on and if it led to any bigger problem he would turn around and go back. DJ was long gone and finally we started from the meeting point. Suman who was leading eventually unleashed the fury of his motor and swiftly disappeared into the distance. Eventually I caught up with DJ and decided to stick with him as I too couldn't carry higher speeds due to the shift light coming on at 7500 rpm. As my motorcycle was in the run-in period, the shift limiter was preset to 7,500 rpm, which meant I could cruise at a maximum speed of 125 kilometers per hour. More on the run-in later. Suman reached the gathering point and waited a good 10 minutes before we arrived. From the gathering point, we proceeded towards the breakfast venue. I was happy to see him making it this far without any problems. After breakfast. We refueled and hit the highway. Soon we turned to a B road. As we covered more distance, the horizon was looking better with some fantastic scenery. I could feel the adrenaline rush as we edged closer to the trails. I was tempted to push the adventure X on the B road, but my motorcycle being new, I took it easy. I had it at the back of my mind that I had to somehow get through the run-in process as quickly as I could to start riding carefree. I deliberately rode my adventure X at the smallest of opportunities. Moreover, I would take longer routes to reach a destination when a shorter option was available. This was also helping me to get a better grip on my motorcycle. I guess the reason the automotive companies ask you to stick below a certain speed limit during run-in period is so that you can get a better grip of your vehicle and understand its characteristics. After riding the Karisma for so many years, The challenge I faced in getting used to the Adventure 390 was the number of times I had to shift gears to keep it in the correct rev range and be in the right gear. As the Charisma had plenty of low down torque, it was a lot more forgiving even if I was riding in the wrong gear. However, it didn't take very long to adapt to the ways of Adventure 390. It is not a machine to be ridden sedately. Not that you cannot, but you will best enjoy riding it a bit aggressively 
The speed at which I was cruising on the Adventure X was way more than that on Karanzma. So, in a way, I was still happy, even though I wasn't pushing the Adventure X hard. During this ride, we had to pass through some villages to the start point of the trail, disturbing the morning peace of the villagers. Whenever I pass through small villages, I'm stuck by the thought as to how lucky these villages are. Unlike us who are living in cities, their lives are so much simpler. They live amidst lush greenery, eat fresher food, communicate with all other villagers, and there is a general sense of community living. Of course, our lives in cities are easier because we are pampered with doorstep everything. Even though life in villages is difficult, I would trade my comforts for the village life. Living in villages teaches us to be more self-sufficient. We learn the art of growing our own food and living in harmony with others without the need for governance from external source. Is life all hunky-dory in villages? Probably not, but it will certainly be more fulfilling. So, we finally reached the start point of our trail. A quick fiddle on the controls of my motorcycle and our rear ABS is switched off. I am ready. Sumant was the lead and Alok was the tail. Both were in intercom and ensuring the safety of the rest of the tribe. I know that Sumant is an experienced rider and he has ridden this trail several times in the past. So I thought it best to follow him and stuck behind him. Trail starts and after a couple of minutes, Sumant speeds up to some good velocity. And I do the exact same thing. Mistake. He knew the trails, I didn't. He has experience, I don't. I have ridden a trail once in the past on Suman's expulse. During that trail ride too, I had an incident which could have resulted in a catastrophe. More on that later. Let me first tell you what my mistake here was. As we were blasting away on the loose surface strewn with pebbles and small sized rocks, I was thinking to myself, easy peasy. Just then Suman slows down drastically due to a sharp bend in the trail. I didn't anticipate that and I almost rear-ended into Suman's enduro. It's fascinating how our brain works. Within that fraction of a second, I had the thought that I'm going to crash my new motorcycle and not only end up damaging my motorcycle, but also Suman's. And to source parts for Suman's bike is such a challenge. Somehow, I managed to avoid the disaster and veered slightly to the left into the bushes, hoping that the bushes would slow me down. Suman was unaware of this as you can see. He just looked back to check to see what all that noise was about. Although this wasn't enough for me to learn my lesson and take it easy on the trails as you will see further on. Now back to the story of my previous trail ride. We were 10 of us on that ride, mostly big bikes, except DJ, Varun and myself. DJ was on a stock expulse. I was on a fully tricked out expulse. Varun was on a Himalayan. The trail was through a forest area. After we had ridden almost 80% of the trail, we hit the final turn. From here, it was one path ride to the exit. I felt confident, so did DJ and Varun. We somehow took the lead and started blasting down the narrow pathway. Soon, it was DJ and me close together. DJ was leading, I was following him close behind. We were doing good speeds and suddenly DJ starts to slow down, although the path ahead could be negotiated at fairly substantial speed. And then he stops altogether. This left me confused and I was carrying good speed and what do I see ahead? A steel bailing wire tied between two trees exactly at chest height. Instinctively, I grabbed the brakes as hard as I could and almost came to a halt just before reaching the bailing wire. As I said, almost, but I hadn't stopped yet. At the last moment, I had to perform some crazy acrobatics to avoid the bailing wire and finally lost balance and dropped the expulse. Thankfully, no damage done to the man or the machine. More importantly, lesson not learned as you can see from the incident in the current trail. Trails can throw random surprises at us from all sides, up, down and either sides. We cannot predict how the surface below is, or what's hanging from the tree line above, or what may cross your path from either side. I guess this unpredictability is what makes trail riding so thrilling. It's best to be as prepared for any impending challenges. Here is the scenario. Can you imagine losing your motorcycle key in a place like this? 
I have mandated one particular habit and that is to carry my vehicle spare key. When on motorcycle, I keep it safe in my hydration back pocket. I learned this lesson the hard way. About 13 years ago, I had driven to Mandalpatti in Kurg at around 7 pm. Back then things were very different there. You could drive your car or motorcycle all the way to the end point and then there was something like a road to take you there. The road there, although broken, I managed to drive on to the end point in my wagon several times. Now though, it's a proper off-road course and the only way to get to the end point is using one of the 4x4 jeeps which are available for hire there, driver included. And no, even motorcycles are not allowed there. Anyway, so that fateful night, after a lot of merrymaking, at around 1am, I realized that I had lost my car key. We all searched for the key in vain. Thankfully, we had another car. So few friends drove all the way to my parents' place in Mysore and returned with the spare key the next morning at around 11. On the bright side, I got the most peaceful sleep that night in my car and I did not get mugged or murdered. Now, whenever I travel out of the city, whether by car or motorcycle, I always carry the spare key. I'm sure I'm not the only one who would have landed in a situation where we have either lost the vehicle key or locked it inside the car and then seen the visual of the spare key lying in the closet appearing before our eyes. Do you share your experiences in the comments. Anyway, after averting the potential disaster, I thought if I stick to the front, I may at most drop my motorcycle but at least won't hit anyone else. So, I started blasting away in the front. I was pleasantly surprised at the capability of the Adventure X. As a novice, I was able to build a big gap to the people behind me. Adventure X is a very forgiving motorcycle. It lets you make mistakes and doesn't bite back. There were instances when I momentarily lost the front end by riding over a protruding rock but the motorcycle was back in control in no time. And the ride by wire throttle just made power sliding the rear wheel such a delight. Ride by wire enables for precise throttle control. When I detected a slide more than what I could handle, I had to reduce the throttle and not fully cut it out. And because I have MRF rubbers on my motorcycle, I didn't care much for the wear of the rubber and pulled many power slides. Unlike Metzella, MRF doesn't burn a hole in your pocket. The motorcycle takes a beating when we ride trails. Here too, the Adventure X impressed me. Except for the right mirror coming undone, everything was absolutely fine on the machine. Being in the front also turned out to be a mistake. Why? I didn't know the trail and which way to go. So I would go full blast for some time, then stop and wait for others to make sure that I wasn't lost. Once someone would take a correct turn, I would follow them for some time and then lose patience and once again go pasting. And the story kept repeating. I think I was high on the idea that my motorcycle is easier to handle on these trails as compared to the big adventure motorcycles. The best way to ride trails is to follow one another at a safe distance. I was more like an excited dog that runs helter-skelter when it sees its owner after a long time. I kept overtaking everyone on the trail as if I had some point to prove. Later, I discussed this with Sumanth and told him that I felt these were my mistakes. He, in his usual self, smiled and calmly said, It happens, you will learn. While all this was happening, the heat was getting unbearable. And to add to my misery, I was wearing street-worthy riding gear. I'll discuss about the gears in a separate video. We made it to half distance which was the highest point of the entire trail and then rested out for a good chunk of time. A lot of stories and experiences were exchanged. Many possible future rides were discussed. Even through the sun's scorching heat, there was cool breeze. I let my gears try out in the meantime. We were just at half distance and I had already emptied out my hydration pack. Thankfully though, from here on it was mostly downhill which was less taxing. On the rundown, I saw an astonishing view of Vani Vila Sagar Dam and it became my scenery for a few minutes. It's difficult to express in words how mesmerizing these views can be. I couldn't help but think how raw yet delicately beautiful nature can be. Trail riding has this advantage where one can get up 
close to nature and witness the same beauty from a different perspective. Apart from the fact that trail rides are fun, one also gets a chance to improve upon his or her riding skills. The physics of trail riding isn't the same as tarmac riding. Saddling is an important skill to learn to let the motorcycle flow effortlessly. But continuous saddling is tough and can cause fatigue in the thigh and leg muscles. Body positioning while riding on no surface is the opposite of tarmac riding and your muscle memory can sometimes rob you of the chance to negotiate turns well, as you will see. I had a couple of more incidents on the way down as I missed my turn in point and ended up being a tangent to a circle. Once again, brakes and bushes came to my rescue. The reason to have switchable ABS at the rear is to facilitate turning in of the motorcycle. You choose the line, lock the rear and count the steer. At the apex, you can use the throttle to power slide your way out of the turn. And to power slide, your traction control has to be off if you have one on your motorcycle. Well, I wasn't able to do any of that due to my limited skills. There is still a lot for me to learn. But my most important learning of the day was to look as far ahead as possible even when the temptation is to look where I'm arriving. And you will notice this in my GoPro footage. Whether tarmac or off-road, looking as far ahead as possible is a much better practice as it lets you decide on the line and make corrections well in advance. Finally, we were on the last stretch of the trail and this was a flat out section. I was hitting speeds of over 80 km per hour here. It felt like a lot more than that though. Yep, you are right. I still hadn't learned my lesson, but thankfully, there were no surprises and I made it through the high speed section. We exited the trail near Vani Vila Sagar Dam and I finally hydrated myself with some cool tender coconut water. The return journey was fairly straightforward and uneventful. We all bid farewell to each other near Nelmangla and rode our separate ways. Everyone was tired, but I was looking forward to the next day's ride.